going to go ahead and get us started. Uh, so everyone, welcome back. We'll reconvene our meeting. Uh, as we get started, for those who are joining us, uh, and this is new for them, and I know new for all of us, I'm just going to walk through uh, a few points and uh, make sure everyone knows what to do as we all work together to make sure that we're providing a uh, engaging but also accessible public meeting virtually. Uh, so I'll get started with the with the agenda in just a second, but I want to make sure that anyone who is watching that they are aware of opportunities to weigh in and provide public input. So um, there are going to be a number of opportunities to speak this evening. Um, the first opportunity for public comment is going to be on items that we're actually voting on tonight. Uh, so we have a full agenda. Uh, and if you are voting, or if you wanna to speak to any of the items that we're voting on, that will be the first opportunity for public comment. Uh, and then we have a number of scheduled public hearings. Uh, we are gonna go ahead and two of them together. Uh, so we actually will have four specific public hearings. Uh, and then finally, at the very end, we're gonna have a opportunity for general comment on any other item. Uh, so similar to our regular meetings, uh, those who wanna speak, you'll be given three minutes to speak. Um, also, I wanna remind folks that uh, we work really hard to make sure that we're creating and providing a safe space for people to speak. So we have some general rules that we ask you to follow, and that includes refraining from any derogatory comments or remarks, name calling, or the use of profanity. So if that occurs tonight, we will be cutting that comment off. Um, so in order to make public comment, what we'd like you to do, <clears throat> we would like you to call 311 or to call 456-3000 and press the number one. Uh, after you do that, you'll hear a number of prompts and we want you to make your selection. So uh, if you wanna provide comments on uh, items on our agenda that we're voting on, your prompt is gonna be to press one. Um, if you wanna provide comment on a public hearing, uh, the very first one is a public hearing uh, to consider objecting to a waiver of the required separation distance between Dickinson Buffer Park and a proposed medical marijuana facility. So I wanna make sure people know that that's a medical marijuana facility. At 1525 College, you'll hit press, you'll uh, press number two. Uh, you'll press three if you wanna comment tonight on uh, programmatic agreements with the Michigan State Historic Preservation Office or uh, if you wanna comment on our housing, our 2021 Housing and Community Development Annual Action Plan, you'll wanna press four to provide comment on the public hearing to consider a Brownfield Plan Amendment for the Grand Rapids Nehemiah Project located at 1530 Madison. And then press five if you wanna provide comment on the public hearing for a special assessment district for ornamental street lighting. And then finally press six uh, if you want to wait till the end for general public comment. Okay, so I'll remind those uh, I'll remind those prompts to you again as we get to each of those public hearings, but I wanted to let you know at the onset so that you can call that number and then what you'll do is you'll be put in a queue and then we'll answer, we'll listen to those comments uh, once we get to those specific public hearings. Okay, so with that, we're going to uh, call this meeting uh, back to order and we are going to follow our typical process. And so I'm going to ask you to join me just momentarily for a moment in silence, and then we'll do a moment of silence, and then we'll do Pledge of Allegiance, and then roll call, and then I'll introduce you to the individual who will be providing interpretation services tonight for us, and then we'll get into the agenda items. So if you'll just join me for a moment of silence uh, before we go to Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I do have a flag behind me, so I'm gonna go ahead and stand. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. United States of America, to the, to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, with indivisible. liberty and justice, justice for, all. for all. Thank you. All right, next we will have roll call. You guys did that pledge much better than the county did when they did theirs. <laughs> All right. Mayor Bliss. Yes. Commissioner Isasi. Present. Commissioner Lanier. Present. 
Commissioner Jones. Here. Commissioner O'Connor. Present. Commissioner Ruppert. Here. Commissioner Moody. Present. We have a quorum. Great, thank you. Um, next, I would like to introduce you to the individual who will be providing interpretation services tonight, and that is Ms. Griselda Estrada. So, Griselda, you wanna weigh in here? Buenas noches, me llamo Griselda Estrada. Um, si necesita interpretación para comunicarse con la Comisión de la Ciudad esta noche, yo estaré aquí para servirle y ayudarle. Llame al 311 o al 456-3000 y, y aleja la opción 1 y luego elija la opción para desear para la sesión que se sea hablado. Presione 1 para proveer comentarios sobre los elementos que la Comisión de la Ciudad estará votando. Presione 2 para proveer comentarios sobre la audiencia pública para considerar objetos en, un, en una extensión de la distancia de separación requerida entre Dickerson Park, Buffer Park y una instalación de marihuana medicinal propuesta en 1529 College, College Avenue, South East, Sureste. Presione 3 para proporcionar comentarios sobre la audiencia pública sobre acuerdos programáticos con el Oficial de Preservación Historia, Histórica de Estados de Michigan o para proporcionar comentarios sobre la audiencia pública sobre el Plan de Acción Anual de Viviendas y Desarrollo Comunitario en el año 2021. Presione 4 para hacer comentarios sobre la audiencia pública para considerar una enmienda de Plan Bronchio para el proyecto de reurbanización El proyecto Grand Rapids Nehemian, ubicado en el 1530 de Madison Avenue, Southeast, Sureste. Presiones 5 para proveer comentarios sobre la audiencia pública para el Distrito de Evaluación Especial número 8752 para el alumbro público ornamental en la Lake Drive desde Genesee Calle hasta la calle Glenwood Avenida. Presiones 6 para proporcionar comentario de audiencia uh, pública general. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. All right, so this will be the first opportunity for public comment tonight. And again, this is public comment specifically on items that we are voting on tonight. And again, we ask you that you share your name, the city that you live in, and we'll give you up to three minutes to speak. City Clerk, do we have anyone in the queue? Madam Mayor, we don't have anyone in the queue for topic one. Okay, thank you. All right, we're gonna move on then, and we're gonna go to uh, of the minutes. Uh, so can I get a motion? We have two uh, minutes to approve tonight. The first one is city, the minutes from our city commission regular session on March 17th at 7 p.m. Can I get a motion? So moved. Support. All right, moved and, and supported. Any questions or comments, commissioners? All right, I'll turn to our city clerk for the vote. I gotta have my list here. Usually look at your, all your I usually look at all your beautiful faces. Commissioner Isasi. Yes. Commissioner Moody. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Lanier. Yes. Commissioner O'Connor. Yes. Commissioner Ruppart. Yes. Mayor Bliss. Yes. All right, next is are the uh, minutes from our city commission special meeting on April 7th. At 1 p.m. Can I get a motion? So moved. Support. Okay, moved and supported. Any questions or comments? All right. Uh, City Clerk, you want to call? Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Commissioner Isasi? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes. All right, next that will take us to petitions and communications. The first one is a communication received from Dr. Justin S. Bean expressing opposition to a medical marijuana dispensary and grow facility in the Madison Square neighborhood. That is received and filed. Communications received, 14 of them urging the city commission to impose a moratorium on small cells. That is received and filed. And we put those all in for the, the file, just so you know. Great, thank you. Um, communication received from Scott Atchison regarding a downtown information center to be located at the intersection of Pearl and Monroe. 
That's received and filed. Communication received from Scott Zakerzek expressing opposition to the park waiver request for Dickinson Park. That's received and filed. Communication received, including a report of community outreach for Edens, located at 1525 College Avenue Southeast. That's received and filed. Communication received from Rick Truer asking the City Commission to support installing 3,000K warm white lights in East Town. That is received and filed. And communication received from Chris Vanderstel, Acting President of Madison Square Church Council, expressing opposition to a marijuana dispensary located at 1525 College Avenue. And that is also received and filed. All right, thank you, City Clerk. That will next take us to reports of city officers. The first one is the comptroller report for the period of March 5, 2020 through April 1, 2020, the amount of $40,255,749.26. That's received and filed. The comptroller's monthly financial report as of February 29, 2020. That's received and filed. And treasurer's report for the period of February 29, 2020 through April 13, 2020. And that is also received and filed. All right, next that will take us to our consent agenda. And our consent agenda has a list of items that we uh, talked about earlier today and voted on unanimously. So with one voice vote tonight, we will adopt those items. Can I get a motion for the consent agenda? So moved. Support. All right, commissioners, any additional questions or comments? All right, all those in favor say aye. Well, hold on. Aye. aye. Can I oh, call I'm the roll? Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, no. I want to make sure we don't lose anybody. Yeah, go ahead. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner, yep. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Commissioner Isasi? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes. All right. Thank you. It passes. So next it'll take us to items from consent. And we have one item that is removed. Yes, the first item is a um, amend was an amendment to a uh, bid list item. Okay, can I get a motion? So moved. Support. All right, moved and supported. Commissioner O'Connor, you want to tell us about this? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, so uh, during our uh, fiscal committee this morning, uh, we had this uh, item come up, which is a uh, contract with a company called Lots of Freaking Talent LLC, uh, which took over the contract or managing the website of the My GR City Points uh, for a one-year contract with two one-year renewals. Uh, there was discussion at the fiscal committee about the uh, this program as a whole uh, and how it's currently being used and whether or not uh, uh, we should continue this program at the city, uh, given uh, some some challenges that have ar arisen around it and the, uh, the utilization of it by uh, by people. Um, uh, assistant. Um, uh, City Manager Matthews uh, brought to light that there are still some outstanding uh, points that need to be cashed in. Uh, so we uh, made the determination at fiscal to approve a one-year contract this morning rather than a one-year contract for two one-year renewals uh, to allow the website to continue to operate, but to also to then wind down the operations potentially of my GR City points uh, and uh, save that money in the future. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, so, Mr. any questions or comments? All right, city, you want to call? Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Commissioner Isasi? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes. All right, next that will take us to ordinances. We have three ordinances before us tonight. The first one is an ordinance amending section 4.2 of ordinance 2019-56, establishment of a new classification assistant economic development director. Moved. All right, Commissioner Estasi, you want to? Yes, um, so this is the creation of the classification of the assistant economic development director, uh, part of uh, our regular succession planning for the economic development department. Uh, like many other positions, it adds an extra component of leadership and oversight and provides for continuity of services and the absence of our economic development director. Thank you. An important position during these times. Uh, commissioners, any questions or comments? All right, this is a roll call vote tonight. Commissioner Isasi? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Commissioner Moody? 
Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes. It carries. All right, that'll take us to our second ordinance tonight. The next one is the ordinance amending section one of the budget ordinance 2019-19 for fiscal year 2020 amendment number 13. So moves. Four. All right, Commissioner O'Connor, you want to tell us about this? Yes, thank you, Mayor. So at fiscal this morning, we did adopt the budget ordinance. Uh, some items of note on there are uh, an expenditure to uh, um, build out the construction of our composting facility at uh, Butterworth, which is a very exciting uh, uh, opportunity. Uh, the second item is a, uh, uh, an expenditure for our police department to uh, spend some money from a uh, federal forfeitures fund to outfit a uh, device building. Uh, our community's uh, children has a, a line item on there um, to uh, deal with some unrestricted, uh, previously unrestricted revenue. Um, you know, our development program is going to uh, recognize an appropriation of some brownfield dollars. Um, here, um, Michigan, uh, Michigan Street Corridor Improvement Authority has some additional tax increment revenue. Um, we're funding the Auto Theft Prevention Authority again. And uh, we also received a grant from the Office of Highway Safety and Planning around our bicycle safety implementation to provide some overtime for officers at some variety of locations to uh, help educate the public about safety. Um, it was just an appropriation for the uh, elusive uh, pilot from one department to another. Um, and then uh, some CDBG Black Ramp fund uh, to deal with uh, coronavirus, which is absolutely important in this, uh, this uh, uncertain time. Great, thank you. Um, so commissioners, I think one of you, one of you, you're typing. Uh, so if you are typing or doing something, just make sure you hit uh, mute so that it's not uh, disruptive. Uh, so. Commissioners, any questions about that item? All right, this is a roll call vote and then I'll ask for a vote for immediate consideration. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Commissioner Sassi? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes. All right, can I get a motion to give this immediate effect? So moved. So moved. Or All right, moved and supported. City Clerk, you want to call for the vote? Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Commissioner Sassi? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes. Uh, so next, that will take us to our third ordinance to be about tonight. This is an amendment to section 1.505. Chapter 11, Title I of the Code of the City of Grand Rapids and providing for the publication of the same. All right, can I get a motion? So moved. So moved. All right, moved Report. and Thank you, moved and supported. Uh, Commissioner, what do you wanna tell us about this? Yes, ma'am, uh, this is an ordinance to amend section 1.5 1 1 of chapter 11, the city code. This section is being amended to allow the city manager to uh, approve purchases up to 500,000 in the case of emergencies from the previous 200,000 limit approved on March the 17th of 2020. Such emergencies wherein any delay in purchasing would possibly result in the interruption or detriment of the public. So this amendment gives our city manager the authority to uh, do what's necessary for our city. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, commissioners, any questions or comments? All right, City Clerk, you wanna call the vote? Commissioner Isasi? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Jones? My answer is yes. Commissioner Lanier? <laughs> yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. And Mayor Bliss? Yes. And can I get a motion to give this immediate effect? So moved. Support. Support. All right. City Clerk, you want to call the vote on the immediate effect? Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Lanier? Yes. Commissioner O'Connor? Yes. Commissioner Ruppart? Yes. Commissioner Isasi? Yes. Mayor Bliss? Yes. It carries. All right, commissioners, we don't have any resolutions tonight, so that will take us to our scheduled public hearings. 
So I will go ahead and um, start the first one. This is a public hearing to consider objecting to a waiver of the required separation distance between Dickinson Buffer Park and a proposed medical marijuana facility at 1525 College Avenue Southeast. Uh, so I will start this uh, public hearing with just a very brief introduction by our interim uh, director of planning, uh, Ms. Turkelson, and then we will see if anyone is in the queue to speak to this item. Good evening, Commission. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Perfect. Okay, so the City of Grand Rapids Planning Commission has received a special land use request for a medical marijuana grow facility with an ancillary provisioning center at 1525 College. The subject facility or proposed facility is within 1,000 feet of Dickinson Park and Madison Square Church. And so in accordance with the current zoning ordinance requirements, medical marijuana facilities must be 1,000 feet, more than 1,000 feet, from certain sensitive uses, including public parks and religious institutions. Uh, the ordinance does allow the Planning Commission to grant waivers to those separation distances. Uh, however, they do uh, provide an opportunity for input from the landowner of the sensitive use. So I think um, the Commission has seen several applications, similar, several requests similar to this. So I won't um, uh, belabor um, the responsibility that you have with regard to what the process would be for the consideration of the, um, the objection. Um, so I will uh, just open that up to any questions if you have that later. Um, Dickinson Park does have a direct distance of 749 uh, feet and a network distance of 1,785 feet to the current park access point. Uh, however, there is a proposed plan that was included in your packet uh, for the park to um, have a new public access off college, which would reduce that current that network distance down to 824 feet. Uh, so this evening is a public hearing. Uh, this item would be brought back before you on April 28th for consideration of whether to file an objection. And just as a reminder that the Planning Commission would consider the objection and with their ordinance standards. However, the Planning Commission would not be obligated to deny the waiver if an objection is filed. They must use their a different set of standards uh, that are located within the ordinance. Uh, so if both waivers that I've mentioned were granted, in this case, Park and Religious Institution, were granted by the Planning Commission, at that point, the Planning Commission would then move on to consider whether it's an appropriate land use. And that is all I have. If there's any questions for me, I'm here to answer. Great, thanks. Commissioners, any questions before we open it up for public comment? All right, City Clerk, do we have, or or maybe uh, Mr. Doug Start, do we have anyone in the queue? Madam Mayor, we have one caller in the queue at this time. Okay, great, let's hear from them. Good evening, caller. You're on with the City Commission. Can you please state your name and the city you live in? Hi, my name is Christy Carlin Kinnich. Thank you. You're on with the City Commission. Can you make sure that your volume is down on your, your computer uh, behind you and you have three minutes? Absolutely. Well, thank you for hearing us tonight. Um, I am the First Lady at Madison Church um, and I serve also on our community outreach team. I have attended Madison and have been serving in Southtown for over 20 years um, as both the youth pastor at Madison and a volunteer. Um, last year, I served on the Business Area Specific Planning Committee, and throughout that time, we spent significant time listening to the desires of the community and what residents hope to see for the future. And I want to encourage you tonight to deny this waiver. Um, this park is one of the few parks in the neighborhood, and it has a basketball court and equipment and places for young people to gather and families. And it's not just green space. It's a park designed for kids and families to use. And with Dickinson Park located within a thousand feet from this proposed location for Edens, we're concerned that we're going to see loitering, loitering increase and that those who will come and purchase marijuana can go to the closest available spot to use, which can be Dickinson Park. The swings and slides in this playground are used by children in our community, and we think parks should be safe places. And we want you to consider the safety of children. Also, since opening, we know that um, Eden's plan is not just to sell medical marijuana, but to also sell recreational marijuana. And we're also concerned about the safety um, and what's going to happen with um, community and police relations. Um, since opening retail cannabis stores, Colorado saw an 8% reduction in white teen arrests, 29% increase in Hispanic teen arrests and 58% increase in the arrest of African-American teens. 
The youth in our ministry have expressed concern that they get stopped by police asking where they're going because they fit a profile. And we are concerned bringing um, a dispensary in this particular location will just increase police presence and not actually increase the community police relations. Um, further, our neighbors in the business area specific planning have not um, asked for a dispensary, but they have asked for a number of other businesses. And we would like to see our city um, include those first before we see more dispens dispensaries pop up in this particular neighborhood. Um, and we're also concerned about the traffic um, that's going to increase and what impact that's going to have on the Center for Community Transformation and those who use both the bus stops and who walk there. And um, we don't think this aligns with the business area specific plan. So thank you for hearing my comments. Thank, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Douglas, any others in the queue? There are no others in, the, in that queue. Okay, thank you. We're gonna close that public hearing and we will move on to our next one. Uh, so the next two I'm gonna take together commissioners uh, and we'll have Ms. Connie Bohatch uh, fill us in on both of these, but I'll read them to get us started. We have a public hearing on the programmatic agreements with the Michigan State Historic Preser Preservation Officer. Uh, and then we also have a public hearing on fiscal year 2021 Housing and Community Development Annual Action Plan. Uh, so we'll start again with uh, Ms. Bohatch telling us about both of these items, and then we'll see uh, who is in the queue to be heard. Madam Mayor? Yes. Madam Mayor? Before Ms. Bohatch starts, is it possible to read the numbers again for those who may be interested, just in case people came um, to the meeting after those numbers were um, read earlier? Yes, thank you, Commissioner. Um, so if you are watching tonight and you want to speak to this item or the other public hearings, and I'll remind you what those are. So we have, um, after this one, we have a public hearing on the Brownfield Plan Amendment for the Grand Rapids Nehemiah Project. And then after that, a special assessment for ornamental street lighting. And then after that, we have our general public comment period. Uh, you can call, you have two numbers that you can choose from. You can call our 311 number or you can call 456-3000. So the public comment that we're going into uh, right now, you would press number three. If you are caught, if you wanna speak to the Grand Rapids Nehemiah project, you would hit number four uh, with the prompts. Uh, if you want to be heard on the street lighting, that would be number five. And if you want to just speak on general comments, that would be uh, press number six. Okay, so thank you for that reminder, Commissioner. Uh, and so I'll turn now to Ms. Bohatch to tell us about these two items. Oh, Connie, you're on, you're on mute. Okay, right now. City Clerk, do you need to allow Ms. Bohatch access? You're on mute, we can't hear your response. I'm sorry, um, I show her as unmuted. Yeah, it looks unmuted on my side too. So is there another, is there another computer you can go to? Okay, uh, let, let Mayor, me, Mayor, if I City, can. You, wanna, you wanna tell us about these items? Well, I was going to ask uh, Ms. Bohach's uh, supervisor to tell us about these items. Mr. DeLong, are you on? Mr. Eric DeLong, are you on? Can you speak to these? Here I am. Yes, I will do my best. So. Uh, the first item has to do with uh, the programmatic agreement for historic preservation. And we have uh, this programmatic uh, agreement with the state uh, historic preservation office enables us to do local clearances of historic preservation questions we have for Heritage Hill and other, um, other projects. So it's a very important agreement and it helps us provide better service to, to uh, our residents. Yeah. Um, has to do with the annual allocation of community development block grant dollars that and this has been reviewed by our residential by our, by our community development block grant the city commission 
and is uh, ready for consideration by the public. So there are a series of recommendations that are uh, listed in the agenda item and uh, can be uh, discussed today during the public hearing. Once this hearing is concluded, um, the uh, results of the hearing will be considered and the recommendation will be brought back to the City Commission for consideration at a future meeting. Great, thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions or comments before we open it up for public comment? Okay. Uh, Mr. Doug Stark, do we have anyone in the queue for this? There's no one in the uh, queue for topic three. Okay, all right. I'll go ahead and close that public comment period and we'll refer that back to the Committee of the Whole. All right, next up, we'll take us to our fourth public hearing and this is to consider a Brownfield plan amendment for the Grand Rapids Nehemiah Project redevelopment project located at 1530 Madison Avenue Southeast. Uh, so we'll start this with Mr. Kluster telling us about this. I know some of us are familiar with this project as we um, have heard the details in a prior economic development project team uh, meeting. Uh, so for those of you not familiar, we'll have it started by Mr. Kluster and then we'll see if there is comment. And I believe I saw Mr. Bean, I thought I saw mm -hmm. his name um, on correct. the screen. So he is welcome to weigh in as well. Um, I should also note to the public that uh, notice of this public hearing was made pursuant to state law. Uh, and so I will now turn it over to Mr. Kluster. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Commissioners. So public hearing to consider approval of a Brownfield plan amendment for the Grand Rapids Nehemiah project for a redevelopment project that is located at 1530 Madison uh, Avenue Southeast. The purpose of the Brownfield plan amendment is to facilitate grant funding for the project through the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority's grant and loan program. So the property is commonly known as the Center for Community Transformation and houses various nonprofits and social enterprises. Uh, the project described in the Brownfield plan includes renovation of the building to expand community space and to add a commercial kitchen. There are also exterior improvements that are planned as part of the project um, that will in part address stormwater issues at the site as well as parking lot landscaping improvements. So the project uh, total costs are estimated at a million dollars and the proposed grant would fund approximately $306,000 of brownfield eligible activities. And those would include environmental site assessment, demolition, site preparation and stormwater management, including the green roof. Um, the project has been presented to and is supported by both Seeds of Promise and the Southtown Corridor Improvement Authority. And so Dr. Justin Bean is in attendance and is here to provide additional details, including the timeline for the project and to answer any questions that you might have. Great, thank you. Hello, Justin, welcome. Hey, good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, to Jono's point, uh, we've been working on this project for a long time. Uh, the Nehemiah Project, Bethany, Building Bridges, Rising Grinds and NAACP. Uh, I think the big question, you know, that we've been getting so far is like, are you guys still going to make this project work? It's overall a $4 million capital campaign. Uh, hopefully after tonight, though, we'll be at uh, the 50% mark. Uh, the pieces that would be funded are priority aspects. So we are moving full ahead. We still have about uh, 1.5 million of pending dollars and about 1.7 million that's already been raised. Um, so we're moving forward. Um, the last kind of final two million, about half a million to six hundred thousand, is is still renovations and some purchase, and then uh, the rest is programmatic expansion elements. So um, again, this will kind of focus on stormwater management, uh, parking lot, and some green roof features, um, which will be really cool. And the building also, uh, the interior renovations will be LEED certified. So. Uh, project timeline uh, originally was the spring. Obviously, that's going to be pushed back, uh, but we still hope to begin uh, the summer uh, pending. We're out of the of stay at home. Great. Thank you. I'm glad to hear it's still moving forward. Uh, commissioners, any questions? All right. Let's see if we have anyone in the queue who wishes to speak on this. Um, Doug, do we have anyone? We have one caller in the queue. Great, let's hear from them. 
Holly, you're on with the City Commission. Can you please state your name and the city you live in? Good evening, City Commission. This is Christy Carlin Kinech calling again from Madison Square Church. And I am simply calling tonight to just express support for this project. Um, we have been incredibly impressed with the way that the Center for Community Transformation has done amazing community engagement. They have made deep investments in the lives of both individuals as well as to improve the environment and the community um, for the better. I am just deeply um, thankful for the way that Justin and his team have been intentional about how they hire from the community. I've been, um, we've, everybody has just expressed so much gratitude for um, the way that they have transformed the building, opened it up, and also created space for the community to use that's both affordable and exciting. And I'm just, we're so excited to see um, what's coming next and just want to see you lend your support to it. So thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Start, anyone else call in? No, that is it for this queue. Okay, we'll go ahead and close that public comment period then and refer that to Committee of the Whole. Uh, Mr. Justin Bean, thanks again for joining us tonight. Thank you. All right. All right, next that will take us to our final scheduled public hearing, and that is a public hearing for Special Assessment District number 8752 for ornamental street lighting on Lake Drive from Genesee Street to Glenwood Avenue. All right, All right. I believe I have Mr. Tim Berkman here to tell us about this before we open it up for public comment. All right, thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Commissioners. Just want to start by um, saying we've done a, a great deal of work um, thus far with community stakeholders really over the past five months getting to this uh, this point here tonight. In fact, looking back at the calendar, it's five months ago to this day that you know, we had our first meeting with neighborhood leaders on this um, ornamental lighting project. Of course, back then, no one imagined we'd be dealing with the circumstances that we're in today. Um, I'm sure you'd all agree it's hard to fathom a more difficult time. Um, on our business community than what we're going through right now. So just want to start by saying we're fully aware of that and sensitive to the impact that this this current situation has on this discussion. So no action is being requested tonight. We're just looking to listen and learn as we typically do with public hearings, how uh, conditions have affected property owners within the proposed district and let that inform our process moving forward. I should mention that tonight's uh, scheduled uh, public hearing was um, uh, posted on April or, or published in the press April 3rd and 5th and mailers were sent to affected property owners on March 31st. So I want to uh, go through some of the background on this and kind of divide my comments uh, into the pre-pandemic and uh, now post-pandemic or midst of pandemic situation that we're in. Um, as far as some background that led up to this point, the uh, the ornamental lighting, first of all, is uh, being proposed along Lake Drive between Genesee Street and Glenwood Avenue. That's a distance of about a quarter mile. Uh, the existing lighting that's in place out there today was part of a special assessment district uh, back in 1984. That's now reached the end of its useful life. Uh, it currently consists of a mixture of concrete and wood poles with cobra heads, as well as some ornamental pedestrian scale lighting. We are trying to coincide this lighting replacement project with an upcoming uh, federally funded street project that will be administered through MDOT. Uh, a $1.1 million project is scheduled to begin this summer involving just under uh, $500,000 of federal funds that are tied to that project. So handling the two projects, the street and the lighting at one time would, of course, realize some project savings and minimize construction impacts to adjacent properties. Throughout the engagement process, um, city staff met with residents and representatives from the East Town Business Association, the East Town Community Association, and the Uptown Corridor Improvement Authority, presenting various lighting uh, alternatives and associated costs of those options. The, the Business Association Uptown requested the option that includes the installation of a single arm ornamental uh, pole with LED lights. I would also have electrical outlets at the top of the poles for holiday lighting. So that is what we moved forward with in the basis of the, uh, uh, the um, preliminary design and the, the cost estimates that were associated with that. 
Um, this is the same methodology um, that was used for the Ottawa Hills Special Assessment Lighting, dish, lighting Project um, done previously. So um, the EBA and Uptown had previously agreed uh, on the poles and the need to move forward, forward with the project in order to coincide with the Summer Street project that I mentioned. Um, however, the community association, the surrounding neighbors, uh, had expressed a desire to use a, a different uh, LED lamp temperature. That's that's really the color of the bulb. Um, we, we had put forth the city's desired standard of 4,000 um, Kelvin, um, but they were requesting a, a softer, uh, warmer 2,700 um, Kelvin as part of their, um, their preference. And I'm Sure, some of you have heard those comments, and and there may be some um, coming tonight. The uh, the reason behind the four thousand um, uh, Kelvin temperature that the city selected is uh, that's similar to moonlight. It's been shown to provide improved visibility for pedestrians, drivers, bicyclists, uh, with improved color recognition for law enforcement, um, noting vehicle clothing, skin, hair color, um, et cetera. So. Uh, it's more efficient to operate, utilizes less watts per lumen. Uh, and it's also a standard used by cities like Kentwood, Holland, Detroit, as well as uh, utilized by consumers energy. We met with representatives of the community association on multiple occasions to understand their concerns uh, in an effort to achieve consensus on the light temperature. Uh, though we're, we've decided that we would like to move ahead with the 4,000 Kelvin temperature on this project and within other commercial corridors, we did offer um, the exploration of a pilot involving a, a small number of 3,000 Kelvin uh, Cobra head fixtures that the Energy Lighting and Communications Department has available on hand. And we would put those in a residential street within a neighborhood uh, as part of a separate LED pilot project just to explore that option further. So that's what got us um, to this point. Of course, now we're in the midst of the pandemic. So I wanna offer some comments in light of that. Um, first of all, to note the, uh, the vote cards that were issued uh, to the 22 property owners along this, um, these project limits. To date, uh, 10 have submitted responses. Six of those responses were in favor with four in opposition. 15% of the rep, uh, represented frontage um, voted in favor, while 21% of the, the linear footage along the frontage opposed. So 12 of those remaining 22 votes have not yet been received, which represents 64% of the frontage. The city did receive a letter um, on April 8th from the East Town Business Association requesting that action on the street lighting project be tabled until an appropriate decision can be made about finances for the project in light of this uh, pandemic that we're in. We responded immediately, noting that we would not proceed with next steps in the process until we had a chance to review all of our options and that we would work with them and other stakeholders to understand those choices fully. The, the street project though, as I mentioned, has federal funds tied to it and that's scheduled to be bid in June. So in order to align the design, the bidding and the construction timeline, with that street project, we're quickly approaching a critical decision point on what to do with this lighting. So tonight, we're looking to hear any additional feedback um, from the public to help us uh, assist us in that decision process. But I can tell you staff is, is already and has been working on developing alternative options and contingency plans based on the comments received this evening um, and, and those um, received before this evening will work to develop a recommendation to come back to the next Community Development Committee um, at the April 28th meeting. So I'd be happy to answer any, any questions that may come up. Okay, great. I'll start with commissioners and then we'll see how many people we have. So Commissioner Lanier. Thanks, Mayor. Pam, you did a really great job at thoroughly explaining um, this lighting um, public hearing that's before us. Thank you so much for that. I just have a quick question. I recall a few months ago when we, um, maybe it was just a couple months, but we were talking about this project and Commissioner Reppert asked about dimming the light so that it kind of meet in the middle for the concerns that the Neighborhood Association had, but also being able to provide the illumination that the businesses wanted. Um, can you share a little bit about um, those conversations and whether that um, is 
something worth considering and where you landed with that? Sure. So yeah, those conversations have taken place and uh, dimming um, is is different than than the color. These uh, LED lights are, are dimmable and in fact, they're designed to um, be installed at kind of 70% of what their output capacity is. That just allows for the natural degradation over time of LEDs, um, the ability to um, drive them a little bit uh, hotter over time and uh, maintain the sub same similar levels of, uh, uh, of lumens. So that, that is different though from the color. And so the, um, the community association has always certainly a strong preference um, for the, the softer color. I will say that when you look at the spectrum of, of colors and options that are out there, uh, even the 4000 Kelvin is certainly um, closer to the warmer end than, than certainly others, um, but it is, it is a, a brighter white, if you will, when compared to the 2700 uh, Kelvin color that they requested. So then dimming the... Um... I think you're muted. We can't hear you, Commissioner. I said a whole lot too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if the four thousand, um, if they are dimmable, I understand the difference between the hues between the twenty seven hundred and the four thousand. But I'm just, I know that some of the concerns we were hearing was tied to them being too bright at night. So I was just curious to know that if the 4000s could be dimmed, even if they are, it's not the color that they prefer, could that help with the concern about it being too bright and even light pollution? Those were the two concerns that I remember hearing most. Right, and I mean, there's, there's standard levels that we're trying to achieve just from a safety standpoint of wanting to have a certain output level. And so you're gonna try to hit that mark, whether you've got the 4000, or the 2700 color temperature. Um, some of the options that are available are the ability to um, provide some direction on where the, where the output of the LEDs goes um, with an intent to try to shield from, um, I know some, there's some second floor residences along this corridor. And so that's certainly something that we could, we could implement, but um, we want to achieve the same um, level of lumen output or the same um, intensity, if you will, of the lighting, regardless of what, what color it is. Thank you. Yep. Great, thanks. Commissioners, any other questions for uh, Mr. Berkman before we move to public comment? Okay, all right. Uh, Mr. Doug Start, do we have some folks in the queue who wanna be heard? We have one caller in the queue. Great, thank you. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Can you please state your name and the city you live in? Hi, this is Haley Swan. I'm calling from Easttown Grand Rapids. Thank you, Caller. You have three minutes. Go ahead with your comments. I am the Easttown Business Association President. Um, I just wanted to thank you guys for hearing us tonight. And I wanted to call in and kind of reiterate our express that we sent in um, via a submission letter to request that the current East Town Ornamental Street Lighting Project be tabled until further notice. Um, a little bit off what Tim said, um, we spent a lot of time together working um, with the community and the residents in our business district trying to come up with a financially feasible option as well as aesthetically pleasing. We have many of our business district and our residents that are closely butted up together, and many of them are on the second floor. Um, within our business district. So this was a big, as you guys have commented, this is a big issue between uh, mainly the whole project together. We wanted to express um, that the business district simply just cannot support the financial um, aspect of the project at this given time. So we are requesting that it would be tabled till further date. And the city, um, we thank them for commenting back very quickly um, to our letter and working with us um, in collaboration with many stakeholders um, and property owners. And we look forward to further communication. 
Thank you. Um, Mr. Start, any, any other comments? No, that, that was it for that topic. Okay. I, I have one follow-up question for Mr. Berkman. Uh, if we if we do not move forward with these ornamental lights, then uh, what what is the plan? I I heard you say earlier that the current lights were put there back in 1984. That they're failing. That they need to be replaced. Would they just be removed and just your typical street lights be put in with the street project? I'm just curious about what what would happen because clearly we would need to do something with lighting. Sure. Yeah, and that's what we've been uh, having some heavy discussions on over the past uh, days and weeks, really. Um, one of the other complicating factors is this road project is coming. We're proceeding with that, and some of the lights that are out there will be in the way of that. Uh, curb lines are being shifted, and so um, we need to do something to relocate some of what is out there already. And obviously, the benefit of doing the two together was realizing some of that project savings by, uh, by, by doing it at once. Um, so one of the options that we're exploring um, probably in, is most likely to be recommended at this time, but we have to study a little further, is taking care of the um, existing concrete poles that are failing right now and are of, of serious concern, um, replacing those uh, in the meantime, but doing the selective replacement as necessary, and then shifting what ornamental pedestrian scale poles are out there that would be in the way of the project. Um, for the time being. Now that they're old um, light poles, I know the ELC department struggles with getting replacement parts, um, so it's not a good long-term solution, but it, it will get us through the interim. And then looking further down the road, hopefully when everything stabilizes and we all come out from this, um, in 2023, 2024 timeframe, I know we're looking at Wealthy Street and a project along those limits that would um, be immediately adjacent to this same project limits, and we could look perhaps at a holistic um, overall lighting project that would involve both Lake Drive and Wealthy Street, recognizing, again, some efficiencies and economies of scale of doing a larger project at that time. So that's kind of where I see this going, but again, there's a lot more that needs to be looked and discussed and certainly engaging the stakeholders, but um, that's probably the most uh, promising option at this point. Okay, and I, I'm sorry, just one follow-up question. Um, when, we, when we have uh, assessments such as this that are not supported, uh, what have we done in the past? Have we just removed the ornamental lighting altogether? I'm, I, I can't recall an instance uh, what we've done. I'm just curious. Yeah, and I don't know if uh, maybe Mr. DeLong can weigh in on that, but to the, uh, I will say that you know the, the assessment covered the lights that went in, as I mentioned earlier. And once they've reached the end of their useful life, something has to be done, but they are the cities. So um, one option would be to just simply remove those and put back, you know, standard street lighting, which is what, you know, we do on on, uh, on other corridors in terms of cobra heads. And, and but that would certainly lose the, the ornamental aesthetic feel that I know the, um, the business association uh, in Uptown were desiring. Okay, thanks. I just didn't know if we had precedent. Yeah, so Mayor, to answer your question, I'm not aware of precedent. You know, the most recent case was Ottawa Hills, where we actually replaced ornamental with ornamental because they had those lights right there in the life mm -hmm. period too. Yeah. So um, we can go back and look, but I'm not I'm not aware of a, a precedent like this. So I think the, what the city engineer is recommending is um, a very viable option where we would pause and uh, design the project in a way where if we were able to see our way clear at a time as a community to do a, a district forum and a lighting, it wouldn't be disruptive. Okay. All right, thank you. All right. All right, commissioners, we'll refer this to uh, committee, the uh, community development committee. All right, so with that, it takes us to our last opportunity for public comment. And so this is for anyone who wanted to speak on any other issues, uh, any issue that's on your heart or mind tonight. So. We'll open up our last opportunity for public comment before I turn to our commissioners. Uh, so Mr. Doug Stark, do we have anyone in the queue? Right now we have four callers. Okay, great. Call, you're, on, you're on with the city commission. Can you please state your name and the city you live in? Hi, this is Parker. I live, on Grand, I live in Grand Rapids, side. Thank you, you have, you have three minutes. Go ahead with your comments. 
Okay, I was wondering if the uh, city has looked into building some sort of wooden skyscraper. Um, the zoning is becoming more popular in like Sweden or Europe, but um, they're great structures to put next to a river. Um, if it's ever been considered or if it's, you know, I don't know if anybody even knows. So. All right. Thank you. That's, uh, we will follow up. I'm not, I'm not sure what the answer is. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the, the world's tallest is like 31 stories right now. And they're actually, uh, it's a better fireproof building than it is to use like a steel and a glass type format because those, any type of fire can leave permanent damage on a wood, on a, uh, still a steel beam that is barely noticeable. Um, or with the wood structure, everything is pretty, uh, I mean, first off, the wood is thick and it's compacted, so it's so it's actually not going to burn up. A lot of people think it will. It might char on the outside, but um, buildings are actually like super, uh, super intact, and uh, there's a lot out there on them. Um, they're starting to kind of grow a, uh, a global presence, and I know we live in Michigan, where the wood is relatively cheap. So, okay. Thank you, caller. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Caller, you're on with the City Commission. Can you please state your name and the city you live in? Yeah, my name is Rachel Bonin uh, from Grand Rapids. Okay. Hi, Rachel. You have uh, three minutes. Go ahead with your comments. Okay. Yes, uh, so I'm a graduate student from Grand Valley State University, and I've also had some time to work with the city in terms of their welcoming plan. And I ended up doing a scholarly project, and I spoke with Ken, who actually told me to speak about it here at the, uh, the commission meeting tonight. Um, so it was about how the it was noted from the Postal Settlement Survey through the Gateways for Growth uh, Award that the um, police department uh, kind of we could improve in terms of being welcoming to the refugees that are being resettled within the Grand Rapids community. So I conducted some interviews from surrounding police departments and figured out what they've been doing that was being successful and just trying to figure out, you know, in ways that we can essentially improve our department to be more inclusive and welcoming. Uh, so I know I only have three minutes, it's not that much time. So I was just wondering if you guys had any questions for me that I'd be more than willing to answer. Um, and I also have a data report and a poster presentation I can forward over to you if you guys would like. Rachel, that would be great. If you wanted to um, send that to our city clerk, uh, he will make sure that it's distributed to the entire city commission, but I'm sure many of us would like to read your findings. Perfect. Yes, I did actually send it to him before. Uh, sorry, I'd send it to the city clerk, the city clerk before the meeting, uh, just because I wasn't sure how this whole process worked. Um, but definitely, feel free to reach out with me. I'd love to be in contact with you guys to further impact, as well as answer any questions that you may have. And I'd love to continue any further work with you guys. So please don't hesitate to reach out and ask any questions. Great. Thank you. Thank you, caller. Thank you. All right. We have we have two more callers. Great. Thank you. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Can you please state your name and the city you live in? Yes. Hi. Good evening, commissioners. Eric Foster, East Lansing, Michigan, the Banks of Company. I was calling in respect of the park hearing earlier had trouble finding the right way to call in, but wanted to speak. We work with the applicant for that particular location, the Eagles, and we have spent uh, past six months in a long series of engagement meetings with various organizations, church groups, and community stakeholders to learn the key challenges and opportunities within the community identify based on the feedback and embrace the feedback to then build specific tangible action plans of things that can be done with the College Avenue location in partnership with 
both those who are supportive of the applicant, such as our kitchen table and the Greater Grand Rapids Center ACP, and those who are opposed, like Madison Square Church, to find ways to still identify partnership opportunities for hiring, for sweat equity, goodwill programming, and we've so far identified a number of core items in partnership of things that we're going to work on with everybody from the Madison Square Business Association, Seeds of Promise, uh, hopefully the churches in the area on hiring, as well as other activities to kind of improve the overall community and the capacity of the community. So even though we know that there is the concern with the park nearby, we are taking prudent steps to find a way to not only be a good neighbor, but also help enhance the quality of the community, the quality of the park, and the quality of the greater Madison Square section of Grand Rapids. And we just wanted to offer that comment in respect of, or hopefully in your consideration of the park waiver request. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Thank you, caller. Thank you. We have one caller remaining. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Caller, you're on with the city commission. Can you please state your name and the city you live in? Hello, city commission. My name is Anna Hudson, Michigan. I am the city visit program coordinator from the Bank Center of Western Michigan. And uh, we are pretty proud to serve the local community. One of our reaches is to involve the youth from Grand Rapids to participate in the Youth Employment Initiative through the CDBG funding. Um, this is the result of our helping Latin uh, families and youth, but we also involve uh, all the students who are, um, have all the requirements. I just wanted to give uh, my support to the CDBG funding and say thank you so much from the, from the Hispanic Center of Western Michigan. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. And thank you for your work, especially during this time. Yeah, thank you. I'm being in co uh, communication with the city of Grand Rapids to be able to continue the support to the students and families uh, during this situation. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Start, any um, additional callers before we end this opportunity for public comment? That is all of them. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to close that period of public comment and I will turn to my colleagues. Uh, so I, I'll start down there with uh, Commissioner Lanier. I have no comments. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Moody. Madam Mayor, I have no comment other than just thank everybody for being safe. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Sassi. Thank you. Um, I, I do have a few things to say. Um, one, I just wanted to say thank you to city staff for making this process uh, work well today. I, I think um, being able to have those different uh, lines for the public comment were very helpful. I want to just reiterate to residents who might be watching that there are lots of resources available during this time. Uh, please reach out. I've heard so many good stories of city staff who have um, helped helped residents during this time. So um, going that extra mile, and I know uh, city manager, you often talk about acing it. Um, uh, residents are feeling that, so thank you. Um, there's also uh, just something else that you could be doing during this time is to complete our complete your census. Uh, I know, Mayor, you um, had a video a few weeks ago. There's been a lot of events still sort of in this virtual world. Um, so I want to remind residents to take that time to complete the census. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Great reminder. Commissioner Park. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I too want to give a huge thanks to the staff who worked uh, who are working in response to this crisis and and also the thoughtful preparation for recovery that's already underway. Big thanks to the clerk, Joel, and the IT department for I was a super smooth virtual day from my seat. Um, I want to get my thoughts out to the to the families in our city who are directly affected by this virus. And while I don't know who you are, I think of you often as you deal with this up close and personal, and my heart goes out to you. 
uh, as well as to those who are on the front lines of addressing things. Uh, I want to express my thanks to everyone who's in the community who's doing their part, prioritizing the safety of others by drastically changing the patterns of your life. Uh, we know that those are big adjustments. Um, just wanted to share a couple of thoughts. P please keep shopping as local as you can. If you're able to get takeout, grab it from this place down the street. Uh, these businesses are so important to our community and anything we can do right now to support them in this time is key. I hope you're taking time to get outside and keep bodies moving and looking at the awesome trails and parks here in Kent County. Uh, my family and I have been, we've we made a list. We've got a, a, a hike log that we made and we went to a new one on Sunday, uh, Donald Lamoreau Park, which is the county's cousin of Riverside. It was amazing. Um, also, I just want to say this is an incredibly great time for reflection, and I can certainly attest to the ways that it's testing me and my family and shifting what we see as essential in our lives. And just want to encourage everyone to feel all the feelings, the anger, the sadness, the fear, as, as well as the moments of delight that might break through as we navigate these wild changes and continue to offer each other as much grace as you can to those around you. Yeah unprecedented times call for unprecedented grace both to ourselves and to each other uh, and lastly like commissioner isasi said if you need help or know somebody who does please reach out call 211 call 311 uh, there's so many people who are ready to help and make sure everyone in the city knows where they can get what they need in this time so we got this grand rapids and my peace to everyone thank you well uh commissioner o'connor Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I, I really appreciate the, the comments of my colleagues there. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's strange times, but uh, I really appreciate all the people who are out there every day uh, trying to make a difference, doing what they can. Um, I also want to really say thank you to people who are at home. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people who are unfortunately laid off right now, um, and I'm, I'm hopeful that they're going to I'm starting to hear stories anecdotally of people finally getting access to the resources from both state and local government. So it's great to hear that those uh, those resources are starting to come through. Uh, I know there's a lot of people who are uh, are working from home right now. Uh, what I really think that means is they're home, uh, taking care of their family, trying to work to the best of their ability, and uh, and that's a that's a difficult challenge, especially when you have children, uh, you have uh, other family members that need care. And so uh, keep those people in our in our hearts and our minds as they're you know they have grace with those folks too that they're they're doing the best they can to, to manage a family, to manage uh, to manage children, to manage uh, you know other parents, other loved ones. And so. Uh, yeah, keep doing the best you can and, and uh, we'll get through this. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner. And Commissioner, thank you for shifting gears at Long Road Distilleries to make hand sanitizer uh, for people on the front line and our public uh, safety officers and healthcare workers. And I uh, just really appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I want to join in um, saying thank you. Thank you and giving kudos to City Manager, City Manager Washington and to uh, City Clerk Condorp and uh, City Treasurer Lubinsky and City Attorney Hitchcock and the entire city staff for the uh, very uh, diligent work that they have been engaged in uh, since the, uh, the onset of this pandemic. I can't say enough about how proud I am of our city staff and the work that they're doing in these very, very trying times. And so I want to give them a shout out as well as our police department and our fire department and all the others who are on the front lines and of course the essential workers who call Grand Rapids home or who call Grand Rapids their work home as well. So I want to recognize them. I also want to uh, give a shout out to lovelocalgr.com, which is something I know that you got started, uh, Mayor. I'm going to encourage folks to hit lovelocalgr.com to get an idea of where, how they can support local uh, businesses. I also want to give a shout out to Preston, uh, as mentioned, I'm going to be uh, repping either a neighborhood or a neighborhood business district uh, every single meeting that we are doing virtually uh, in recognition of uh, the baddest, and I do mean the baddest, uh, ward in the city, the second ward. And lastly, uh, I think, uh, Mayor, you stole, you stole my thunder, but I wanted to recognize uh, Long Road uh, Distiller Hand Sanitizer. It is available at Long Road. If you have an interest, please go online and uh, purchase some from uh, my colleague, uh, John O'Connor. It is uh, some of the most effective hand sanitizer I've ever used. Thank you. Thank you for that commercial. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. Well said. Uh, go Crescent. Uh, city Attorney, any comments? 
I just say ditto to everything that everyone has said. It's been a wonderful teamwork together and getting through this, and it's quite a journey, and we're all working together, doing a great job together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. City Clerk? Yeah, um, I'll join the thank you parade as well. I thank you for your grace and patience as we went through this. Um, there's no perfect process, um, but um, thank you to Becky Joe uh, and the 311 team, um, Doug Sarr and the IT team, executive attorneys. Um, teamwork makes the dream work, right? <laughs> and so um, just looking at some of the numbers of people participating tonight, we had 31 attendees through WebEx, 32 panelists, which is us, staff, and others. Looks like we had about 33 people watching over Facebook. And um, when I just took a look at YouTube, we had about 17 people viewing. Now, people will view later, too, you know, because this will be still up where people can watch it later as well. I have no idea how many people are watching on cable. So um, I think we've given lots of opportunities for people to um, review their meetings, to take a look, to watch, um, respond. And, you know, people can always email anytime to, you know, any of our email addresses at the city, too and we get those comments over to you. So um, I, th I think um, we are, we're all acing it. Thank you, thank you, City Clerk. City Manager? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I too want to uh, express my thanks. And I say this every commission meeting for all the staff that works behind the scenes to make uh, the public meeting very successful, but I say it even with more intentionality today because there was a lot of people that had to uh, find creative ways to make this happen. And I want to thank all of them uh, for their work, everyone who has been mentioned uh, so far, and even those who have not been mentioned who worked very uh, diligently in making this happen. My appreciation to you. Uh, this is a test of our collective will against COVID that it will not stop us as a community, will not stop our public policy as a commission um, and body. Uh, I want to uh, thank two people that I probably don't think enough publicly, and those are uh, Deputy City Manager Eric DeLong and Assistant City Manager um, Doug Matthews for, for their help uh, in what they provide both uh, professionally and personally. I appreciate them. <laughs> Uh, this has been um, a challenging week, but just a point of personal privilege. Uh, today, um, during the commission meeting, um, I had a, a relative who was buried, and the funeral took place at the same time as um, the beginning of our commission meeting. And I could not be there because uh, of um, the dangers in travel, but uh, COVID does not win. Uh, the family member that they thought that I thought they took away. I have all of you and all the employees in this community as family. And uh, as such, we received news today that we have a member of our workforce, our family that was affected, infected by COVID, our first case of a city employee. I did speak to the employee today, uh, this afternoon, a member of our police department. And uh, although he has uh, overcome, um, Certainly some, some difficulty in, in health, he is doing well. He is, uh, and we'll be releasing more about the condition of the employee and we are wishing him and uh, his family the very best. We have taken precautionary measures in the department, have worked with uh, the county health authority uh, to ensure uh, that we can trace uh, the contact of that employee. But fortunately, uh, they have been, that employee has been off work for nearly two weeks because of the rotating shift schedules that we have put in place. And so we, uh, we I, I say again, COVID does not win uh, and we wish um, him the very best. And I wish the public the very best and hope uh, that everyone will take serious the uh, advice of uh, our public health authorities uh, to stay home, to stay safe and to save lives. Thank you. Thank you, city manager. I know all of us were uh, heartbroken to hear that. Uh, we know a lot of people are being directly impacted by COVID and our hearts and our prayers are with them. Um, I'll just add my thanks to everyone who worked so hard day in and day out um, during this crisis. There are so many people working on the front lines, both here within the city and as I look out my window at the hospital right up on the hill and over at St. Mary's and Mercy and all over the city um, to help us get through this crisis. And 
I've said it before and I'll say it again, um, but what gives me great optimism and hope are all the people uh, like every single one of you who care so deeply about our city. And we are seeing people step up in small and big ways all over this community. And it's a real testament to the compassion and the kindness and the love that we have for one another, but also for our community. Uh, we're a strong community. We're going to get through this together. And it's people who help people through hard times. So thank you all for all of your work and your service. I know you are working overtime to respond to residents um, in your communities or, and your wards and business owners who are scared uh, that they won't be able to open their doors. So I appreciate all of you and your tireless work during these hard times as well. Uh, and with that, we will adjourn this meeting and uh, we will see you again for our next meeting in just a couple weeks. And a reminder that uh, at that time, our city manager will be presenting our fiscal budget. Uh, and clearly it'll be different than what we expected a few months ago, um, but we will get through this and we'll get through it together. So with that, we're adjourned. Thanks. Uh -huh.